Hello, this is Lorna Shaughnessy, reading from Galway. And first of all, I'd like to say a thank you to Enda and all the organising committee of the Fingal Poetry Festival. Thank you very much for having me. I'm just sorry I can't be in lovely scaries, maybe another time. And also I'd like to say thank you to Jessie Lendeni and Siobhan Hudson of Salmon Poetry for, um, for bringing out another collection by me. This is my fourth collection with Salmon and the title is Lark Water. I'm reading from my very untidy den here in County Galway. It's a horrible day, it's pouring outside. So I'm going to start with a rainy poem uh, called Annunciation in a Northern Clime. You came, feathers dripping, expecting to find recognition. It might have helped if it hadn't been raining. If you had appeared in the doorway in a halo of morning light. Instead, your wings dragged sad mud trails on the tiles. I could tell you weren't used to the rain by the way your shoulders strained to take the weight of waterlogged wings. And I wanted to say, I'll get a towel. But your face was closed and intent. When you spoke... I realised you were burdened not just by the weather, but by the weight of your task. And I found an indulgent smile on my lips, like a mother watching her son at his bar mitzvah. I was reading when you came, though it wasn't a prayer book. Botany had become an obsession since I felt the first bulb split, the extension of the first green shoot, the white spear of snowdrop inside me. That was January. Since then, I'd sensed the colour of each successive flower. Purple crocus, yellow daffodil. Learned each Latin name, the number of petals, shape of leaf. And yes, I already knew. I didn't tell you, though. How could I? Wet curls plastered to your wind-reddened face. You shivered in the doorway, stooped in an awkward half-curtsy, as if you might lose balance. I would have liked to sit you by the fire, feed you hot soup. Instead, I bowed my head and held the book to my breast so you couldn't see the cover. I was the calyx that contained the bud, the carpel, a house with no door. But I had seen the saffron-coloured particles, felt them enter my eyes, nose and throat, penetrate with the careless mystery of a bee as it moves from flower to flower and like the bee I had entered the centre of the bloom. The title of my new collection is Lark Water and um, that whole sort of concept comes from a poem by the Spanish poet Federico García Lorca a poem called The Ballad of the Dark Sorrow, where he tells the character uh, Soledad Montaya, this very sad woman, to go and wash her body in water of the larks. And I've, I've no idea what Lorca meant by water of the larks, but I just think it's a beautiful concept. And I took that as the title of my own collection. Um, so what I'm going to read now is my own translation of Lorca's poem, Ballad of the Dark Sorrow. And then I'm going to follow it immediately with a poem I wrote in response to his poem, and it's called Yellow. So here we go. The Ballad of the Dark Sorrow by Federico Garcia Lorca. Cockerels break open the ground, pecking in search of the dawn, when down from the darkest mountain comes Soledad Montoya. Her skin, yellow as copper, smells of stables and shadows, her breasts, smoky as anvils, a ringing sigh in their song. Soledad, what is it you search for, alone at this hour of the morning? Whatever it is I look for, what business is it of yours? I seek whatever I'm seeking, a joy I can call my own. O Soledad of my sorrows, the horse that breaks and bolts to gallop away to the coast will be swallowed up by the sea. 
And why should I fear the sea? When the darkest sorrow springs from beneath the murmuring leaves in the land of olive, le olive trees. Soledad, I see your sorrow, your sadness dark and bitter, like tears the taste of lemon and hope that sours on the lip. This sadness cuts to my very core, like a thing possessed, I pace about, the braids of my hair trailing the floor, kitchen to bedroom around my house, till sadness turns me black as jet, stains my clothes and shades my skin, black my shifts of linen, poppy black my limbs. Soledad, wash your body in water of the larks. O Soledad Montoya, rest your troubled heart. In the valley the river is singing, a spangle of sky and leaves. The morning light is crowning, as gold as pumpkin flowers. O Soledad of the gypsies, pure and always alone, like a riverbed always hidden, like a dawn forever remote. And now my own response to Lorca's poem. Yellow. They called you solitude. I would have called you Sol, my son, and lit up your destiny with a name that could warm the air around the oar of your heart. I would have kept all things black from you, jet earrings, suit-faced poppies, grown only marigolds in your garden, hung amber in your ears. I would have bought you a yellow dress to dance in, to flirt like sunlight when it meets the river at dawn. I would have saved you from the undertow of horses, sold them all and shut the stables so you would never set foot in a forge or hear the melancholy ring of metal beating on hot metal, the sad song of submission to the solid. Your name would have lit my path to your door, so you would never be alone, never have to set out on that long, parched trek to the coast in search of yourself, finding only salt on your tongue. My fixation with larks probably started with my mother. She's now 98 and she still lives in Belfast, but she actually grew up in County Cavan on a farm um, in the Stradone area. And a story she often has told us is about walking to school in the mornings and being late for school because she stopped to listen to the larks. Dallying. Some mornings she could not leave the larks but lingered in the fields after the bell sounded, then walked to school past wild hyacinths, cowslips, and the neighbour's gate where her sister left a stone to tell her they had gone ahead. It was only when the high school windows were in sight that a dread of consequence crept into her bones. Having no guile, she owned up right away. She had stayed behind in the meadow to listen to the larks, there was no other way to say it, nothing else to say. The silence that followed her confession was long, too long for her to read. The teacher removed her glasses, glanced up through a window at the breathing sky, as though trying to remember what it was she had left there. Then, barely audible, she said, Go on now, go and sit down. It's been a hard year. It's been a hard year and a half with a lot of illness and a lot of loss. And uh, I'm going to read a poem now dedicated to my father. Last Rite. Ward 7B is my cathedral now. The sacred site of your shrine and my pilgrimage. Where your breath was miraculous and not just air. I come to collect what is yours, to carry home all last things, last touch, last glance, last words already wafer thin as a host. This small black hold all with your name on a label written in my sister's hand to unzip, and one last time unpack these few hand warmed belongings, pajamas to hold against a cheek, soap to wash these hands bereft, 
the comb and toothbrush I do not know where to put, or how long it will take until they stop emitting particles of you that I might breathe into my lungs, blood, heart, until the polished hull of the casket locks so tight that nothing of you can seep out. And I'll finish now with another lark uh, in the form of a lullaby, sky lullaby. And I have a little, a little epigram here from Gabriela Mistral, a Chilean poet. The sky lark lifts its song so high, we forget how hard it is to die. So sky lullaby. A wreath of green bird song around your bed, robin, blackbird, finch and wren. The lark will rise before the sun to draw it up on the thread it spun from silken strands of sky and wind. Shot like an arrow from the ground, it halts on high, a bodiless sound that hangs in the air from quavers and trills. There is no smoke in the skylark's house, no fire to betray its whereabouts, just a cup of grass and hair underfoot. Step carefully through the hours of day. Know the lark's eggs are easy prey to the hungry rat and trampling boot. Its only defence is its song to the sun, the quaver in throat and quiver in lung as the merlin wheels its taloned hunt. Listen, darkness has its own strains the toot and trundle of distant trains, soft chime of keys in the steering air. A wreath of green bird song around your bed, robin, blackbird, finch and wren. The lark will rise before the sun to draw it up on the thread it spun. Sleep now and wake to its song. Thank you very much again to the Fingal Poetry Festival and uh, I'm looking forward to tuning in for some of the online events myself. Thank you.